Greetings to the brightest audience in the country. Welcome to another episode of Real Science Friday. I'm Bob Enyart. And I'm Fred Williams, creation speaker and software engineer. Fred, we're going to go right into the continuation of my interview with theoretical physicist Lawrence Krauss. Emphasis on theoretical. That's, that's him. That's the guy. He's going to say right at the beginning of this, he's going to say there's no one I know who says that life is too complex to have evolved on Earth. Well, what about Francis Crick, the discoverer of DNA? Didn't he say that uh, <laughs> aliens seeded life here because he couldn't understand how... That's right. Know, He's the, one of a long list of scientists who said maybe aliens brought it because it's so complex. Even Richard Dawkins said it famously yeah, recently. Yeah, panspermia. Then also he said this. He said, well, life might have evolved elsewhere because our sun is relatively young. Yeah, according to the Big Bang, some stars might be twice as old as ours, Others three times as old, but that's it. So what I'm wondering is, what calculation do they have to form the first protein, the first enzyme, the first living cell, where they just need twice as much yeah. time, and then they solve the problem? They need gazillions more time. Yeah, they need to add like 30 zeros to the age of the universe to get their first protein. Yeah. And then all they have is a dead protein. It's like removing a Big Mac from the national debt. Right. Then also he talks about the Earth and how old the Earth is. Oh, yeah. He claims it's 4.55 billion years old. You know, they add that second decimal place, but that's an illusion. And I love how you nail him on this one. You bet him $1,000, mm. and he seems to kind of skip over your bet, but you're asking him, where's the yeah. evidence? What justifies that last decimal place? Yeah. Be- they do that to try to sound more accurate. Like, they really know what they're talking about. Yeah. It's not $4.5 billion, It's 4.55 yeah. billion years old. All right, so let's hit the tape. Thousands have posited that life might have come here from aliens, including the co-discoverer of DNA, Francis Crick. I can't believe you've never heard of this theory. It's a fascinating idea. Yeah, but do you agree with me that they're only punting because if biological life is so complex that it couldn't evolve here on such a hospitable planet, then why would it evolve somewhere else? You got the same problems there. As here, don't well, you agree they're, they're just punting? Well, well. first of all, uh, the, the argument, there's no one I know who says that there's any evidence that life is too complicated to have evolved here. But one of the arguments for why it might have evolved elsewhere is our sun and Earth are relatively young. Our Earth is 4.55 billion years old. The galaxy is 12 billion years old. There are many stars and solar systems that are far older than our solar system. That additional 7 billion years of potential evolution. So, Could I offer right now to donate $1,000 to a charity of your choice if you could show me a published peer-reviewed paper that actually has scientific observations and calculations within 100 million years that comes close to your 4.55 billion years old? Oh, well, we can do it. Uh, I mean, there's tons of them. That you agree with the science on. We I'll can, donate. Just so, the sun and, email and me, to the Lawrence. The sun and, Lawrence, and, and just show that email me. The parameters only agree if it's 4.55 just, billion years just, old. We can just, measure the abundance of various just, elements. And, I mean, every single bit of data tells the same thing. Just oh, no, email. you're not a young earther, are you? Yes, I oh, am. Well, then, you know, Lawrence, then you shouldn't get in your car or Lawrence, fly on a plane just, or, Lawrence, or use your toaster because the same laws okay. of physics and chemistry that say how they work tell us that they, I mean, we, we, we that, have that is we, a we non se- That's that a non sequitur. To go from applied science to origins, you do this in your book a lot. You say because we are starting to figure out quantum mechanics. We know we figured Therefore, out quantum mechanics. <laughs> no, we haven't figured out. You sound like Eugenie Scott. We're no, beginning quantum mechanics, we understand basic quantum mechanics. We understand how it works. We have equations. They, there, there's they are fundamental for the telephone we're using right now. There are fundamental mysteries about the nature of matter, of course, that's why energy, I'm science because I and, want to explore those mysteries. In life itself. So for you to say we really have figured out you don't need God to originate all those no, things. Well, I'm just saying that, is, that, is, that we understand you're overselling. Like you don't need God to make an airplane fly. Lawrence, we you're figured o- out how it happened. That's applied science. Then to go to origins, you're overselling your case. Mm-hmm. Just like you do on in your book, you say all evidence now overwhelmingly supports the Big Bang. Well, now no, that's, over, overwhelming is an understatement. That's, that's a, all evidence that's supports a that the Earth is round. All evidence that's, supports that, they, that there was a Big Bang. All evidence all right. supports evolution. Lawrence, all of these things are scientific I asked facts. you earlier to help me. Now, would there be many advanced degreed scientists at leading universities who would agree with me and disagree with you? No. When, 
Well, how Whatever about no. how about the 400 scientists who signed over at cosmologystatement.org saying that the Big Bang model, and you know what they signed, right? And I've got it right no, in I front of me. I was I once I once with Eugenie did, made a, a T-shirt with you know 500 Steve's. scientists named Steve. Steve. I know I mean, that I that's funny. 400 scientists to say the Earth is flat. They have Are you five. Argue no, the Earth is flat? this is from a Max Planck. Is no, the PhD, that's all it no, means. Lawrence, this is from Max Planck Institute, Cornell University, George uh, look, Mason. It, it, what department? Lawrence Livermore, Los yeah, yeah, Alamos great. National look, Labs. Is, scientists don't argue on credentials. Are, there are no are you thing, right? Unlike religion, there are no scientists. How, How about this, NASA? How about this? Scientists can be wrong. How about this, NASA Kennedy Space Center? Well, you know, four hundred. Okay, Kennedy Space Center. Lawrence, also wrong. I've talked to them. Let me tell you what they point out. And by the way, there yeah. are approximately forty thousand physicists alone in this country. So you're telling me you get four hundred nuts in forty thousand people? That's not too unusual. The way that they're mocked, like by Richard Dawkins, saying the human eye would have been designed by an idiot, and yeah, you'd have well, to be it's, an it's idiot. Certainly, if it had been designed, it wouldn't have been designed the way we would have. That's, would have, that's you're, completely you're, false. Your, 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 your evacuation in, system in two, wouldn't have been designed the way it is, or in, the way you breathe wouldn't have been designed Lawrence, the way it is. Lawrence, in two weeks, I'm interviewing a professor at University of California of ophthalmology, Gary Aguilar. The human eye, the nerve comes out for us in the front and for an octopus in the back. And the reason, according to anatomists who published on this for 20 years now, Richard Dawkins is 20 years behind, is because an octopus doesn't look up at the sky and see the sun. So a bright light, a bright flash like a camera flash, is not going to kill a million cells in an instant. And in a human being, we live on the surface we might glance up toward the sun, just like you go blind for a moment when somebody takes yeah, your picture. The, been, you know, have you ever, the have blood you, cells, let me you, just finish you, it. If you set let up me, your TV, let me just finish the point, your TV, Lawrence. You put the cables behind Lawrence, the TV. let me just finish the point. The nerve comes out of the front of the retina because we need the blood vessels available to quickly regenerate our eyesight. So within one to two seconds, you could see after somebody takes your picture, and it's called an optimal design by leading anatomists, well, optimal. Anyway, look, look, uh, look. Let, let's go back to the one thing you said that is absolutely yeah. ridiculous beyond belief. I mean, yeah. you've said a number of things. Well, but, was that ridiculous but, beyond belief? What I just explained uh, about no, the, the eye? details of it. Are, look, you, you could still design it so you didn't have to put a hole in it. No, the, that's not you, true. There are trade-offs. Well, if you don't want to listen to me, then we shouldn't go, talk. Go can, ahead. Can I say a word? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, you know, when you hook up your TV. You may have your DVD in front of the TV, and you have a lot of cables. You rarely will you drill a hole through the TV to put the cables through. What you'll probably do is wrap the cables around the TV so they don't block the TV. Well, in your eye, there's a drill hole drilled in, and, and, you know, you could call that optimal. You could call it not optimal. The point is it's there, and uh, I, don't, I doubt well, you would do that to your TV. And, but, and, but, you know, look, yeah. those are the I can explain specific. why that's incorrect. You're, you're arguing for specifics. Let's send back to more to generalities. How can anyone in the 21st century think the world is 6,000 years old and still and still consider themselves not in the end. All right, I I'll, I'll tell you. That. All right. In every single bit of data, the, we have evidence. The, the have Neanderthal d- evidence of civilization Lawrence, that are older than 10,000 years Lawrence, old. Lawrence, the Neanderthal DNA has been sequenced. Yeah, I know. It's closer to you than a chimp is to a chimp within the same species of chimps. So the creationists who've been saying for decades that Neanderthals were people have been confirmed. DNA doesn't lie. What do you mean people? People. Human beings. I, I mean, you know, our, our DNA is within 97% the same as an amoeba. That, I don't understand that's what, not, what your concern yeah, is. Well, that's not well, true at all, but a, well, but a sponge... You know, I ran a meeting on early modern humans, and we're yeah. learning a tremendous amount about the end. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. This is funny. We're 97% the same as an amoeba. So next time I go to the zoo, I won't just see that the chimps are my close related cousin. I get to see that the amoeba is. Yeah, not even the chimps are 97%. Now they're saying they're 952 which means about 150 million nucleotides different. Yeah. So he said we're 97% the same as an amoeba. It's not true. And he said, I ran a meeting. That doesn't matter, Lawrence. It's not true. That meeting, I guess we learned that we're closer to amoebas than we are to chimps. (laughs) We must be. (laughs) Right. So he made a mistake there. That's fine. And you can't say... What do you mean, people? What, do you mean what people? is this people you speak of? <laughs> I mean, this is that, Fred. that quirk of theirs where they start asking, well, what are people? What is Darwinism? Yeah, what what is, is evolution? What, what do you mean? What is Neo-Darwinism? This does not equate. <laughs> sounds like the robot on Lost in Space. And Eugenie Scott did it. You can't say evidence in the plural. 
Aaron Ra did it. You can't say Darwinism. You can't say neo-Darwinism. It's like, what's that? What's panspermia? These guys have this weird quirk. And then when you told him there's all these advanced PhD scientists that disagree with him on the Big Bang, he said, uh, what department? The English department. They're all in the English. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was the Indian Affairs Department. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, what, it's, it's at the Max Planck Institute. Here's a few that have signed this cosmology statement.org. Thomas Gold, professor of astronomy, not of music, at Cornell University, and he's a member of the NAS, most prestigious body of scientists yep. in the world. Yeah, Charles Orth, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a physicist. He's a physicist, so he's not a plumber. Yeah, he's, he's, not, a he's not a plumber. And Alton I'm, Arp at the yeah. Max Planck Institute. I'm sure he teaches 16th century French poetry. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he's been an astronomer with Mount Polymer and Mount Wilson Observatories. And then I like this guy, Anthony Perrot. He served for 30 years now in the Applied Theoretical Physics Division at Los Alamos National Laboratory. These are serious scientists, and there's hundreds of them, and they've signed this statement saying that the Big Bang is propped up by fudging the data and ignoring the observations. That's right, and Dr. Krauss calls them nuts. 400 nuts. We got to send that audio of him saying that to them. To those guys. There I'm you gonna, go. <laughs> I'm going to do that, Fred. Real Science Friday, package, special delivery. <laughs> I'm going to do that. So he says, well, there's 40,000 physicists. Well, how many are going to put their name on a scientific statement when they know they're going to be mocked and ridiculed exactly. and called yep. morons and rejected for job applications because they're saying, look, there's a lot of evidence against the Big Bang. Yep. And then I can't believe that he said that you can't drive your car or use your toaster because those inventions are based off of us knowing that the earth is billions of years old. Well, that's what happened when they made the toaster. In fact, they had to wait until they came within 10 percent of the actual age of the earth. Then they were the, able to make the, a toaster. <laughs> Fred, you're an engineer at work. You guys have this GPS project. Do you base your projects on the earth being four billion years old? Hmm. You know what? I, I remember now I was in a meeting. And we were talking about improving GPS accuracy. Yeah. And I said, hey, we should put in the equation the age of the earth, and I think that'll really solve things. So, anyways, I don't work there anymore, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so Fred got They fired. would laugh me out of the room. Yeah, and so many scientists have said that these things are not relevant to our day-to-day -day scientific discoveries and technological inventions. Yep. Okay. Resume the tape. Our DNA is within 97% the same as an amoeba. That I don't understand that's that not your concern is. well that's not well, true you know, at the, all but uh well, but a sponge you know, i ran a meeting on early modern humans and we're yeah. learning a tremendous amount about the Neanderthals, who by the way sure we are. went extinct about forty thousand years ago not and it's very difficult to go to extinct about forty thousand years ago Lawrence, and the universe is six thousand years old you know that there's carbon 14 everywhere it shouldn't be right everywhere uh, in know, diamonds and know, dinosaur I mean, fossils it, and it, coal it, and oil and gas it, it, and why why and dinosaur you know, I mean, soft really tissue amazing because you know, yeah. it, it, every every single thing we teach high school students about the universe contradicts the possibility that the Earth is six thousand years old. Beyond the fact that we have direct relics of of cave art that's thirty thousand years old, we have, we have we have evidence of, of civilizations that are ten thousand years old, and moreover, we have we have genetic and fossil evidence going back. And everything we have blood vessels. Four and a half billion years old. Earth. We the have blood vessels. Are four, and a half, uh, four billion years old. We have. We have, we have many fossils that are almost a billion years old, and we have a tremendous amount of evidence of exactly how life evolved on Earth. And why, why, must, people, Lawrence, why must people reject all the knowledge we have because, because of, they insist that there are Because of dinosaur the Bible must blood be vessels. Why don't you open your mind to the evidence of reality and say, look, if there is a God, the God, as Galileo once yeah. said, if there is a God, he gave us a brain. We Lawrence, should throw the brain out. Dinosaurs... Papers are running 10 to 1 against the claim that the soft tissue and dinosaur fossils are bacterial biofilm contamination. 10 to 1. I'm talking about nature, science, paleontology. So, you know, again, you've got a God, God of the Gaps thing. No, it's no God of the world. Gaps. We learn, we, our ideas evolve. Blood vessels, Lawrence, blood vessels don't hang around for 65 million years in sandstone in Montana. Harvard well, has fact, sequenced I've, proteins. I've been, with, I've been with Jack Horner in Montana and seen the fossil blood vessels. Yeah. And in fact, it's perfectly consistent with things that are 65 million years old. Oh, yeah, you, Jack right. Jack Horner, who was the person who discovered How about the, the carbon-14? How about so the carbon-14, Lawrence? 
There's carbon-14 in the Mosasaur fossil that has soft tissue. Harvard has sequenced proteins from a hadrosaur. Carbon-14 can't last a million years, yet it is everywhere. Can it be contaminated? I mean, you know, when you it, talk about anomalies, you know, it's you're like the people yeah, you know, who, who anomalies. talk about UFOs, and they say, you know, right. there's a UFO sighting in this. I agree with you. You can't, you can't tell me it didn't happen. Well, you're absolutely right. There are anomalies. I, I agree with you, but these but anomalies are everywhere. Ridiculous anomalies when there's a whole Lawrence. basis of knowledge, which tens of thousands of scientists have worked their whole life on, not because they're evolutionists or atheists, yeah. but because they want to understand nature and make the world a better place. And then people like you come along and say, I want to deny all that knowledge because I've decided in advance, in advance of reading anything, based on some book that was, ri- that was written God knows how long ago, that the Earth is 6,000 years old. And no matter what you tell me, I'm going to find an argument not to believe that. That's closed-mindedness. Lawrence, That's not open-mindedness. The anomalies are everywhere worldwide. There's carbon-14, oh, every- diamonds. Uh, look, the deno- I, look, don't talk to me about anomalies. Talk to me about the evidence of Well, of well carbon-14 decays with a half-life of 5,700 right. years. Mm-hmm. This is hard evidence. It can't be neutron capture. The USGS shows how rare radioactivity is in the crust of the Earth. Oh, well, it- hold on. What do you mean how rare radioactivity is in the crust of the Earth? Yeah. In fact, there's as much heat coming from the Earth due to radioactivity as, in fact, the, uh, all of the Earth's yeah. radiant heat coming from the sun. And what percentage... There's a tremendous amount of radioactivity what percentage, the Earth, So I don't know why... In fact, it's one of the fields I study. So again, once again... Uh, you all right. No, no on this, I think I know very much what I'm talking about. 90% of the Earth's radioactivity is in the crustal rock of the continents. That's a true statement. Right? And so if the chemical elements were created in stars and supernovas, then all this uranium and thorium and all, it should be evenly spread no. out through no, the know, core of you know, the earth, no, no, the no, mantle, you know, the I oceans. It surprised me tremendously because when yeah. I, as a physicist, I first thought, you know, the uranium and thorium, which is heavy elements, should be, in fact, in the Earth's core, not in the crust. Well, I so said happens? it should be well, evenly distributed. There are ions, and they float to the surface in a molten Earth. Okay, let Learn me... your chemistry. Uh, Lawrence, I believe you. I believe you. Okay. But, wait a minute. They should be on the floor of the ocean. They no, are volcanoes... No, they shouldn't be on the floor of the ocean because they're... they're, they're their abundance depends upon exactly whether they're in granite or in, or I mean, there's a great deal of potassium, radioactive potassium, K40, under, uh, in, underneath the ocean. But, in fact, the uranium and thorium is, in fact, pre- preferentially, by chemistry and geology, inside granite. And that's just a, that's and, a different and, Okay, now wait, now wait a chemistry, minute. And people yeah. spend their lives trying to understand that. They don't say, you know what, I want to find something. You know, I know in my heart of hearts for no reason except yeah. some inner voice in my mind told me the Earth is 6,000 years old. I know that's the case. Now, they open their mind and they say, All right. let me try and figure out how the Earth evolved and work it out. And they do. And they work very hard. And I get particularly offended when people come up and try and say, you know what, all of that knowledge for the last few hundred years, I'm going to throw out because I know the answer. So when NASA last year looked at the isotopes of the sun and the Earth and they found out that the sun had different isotopes of oxygen and nitrogen than the Earth, and that was a surprise because... They assume that because all of our matter came from stars in a swirling nebula, there's not a good physical reason why we would have different isotopes. There's a bunch of surprises. Why is the, why is the isotopic abundance of deuterium in the water on the oceans on Earth different than that in comets? It's been a big mystery. Actually, we, we've come up with some new developments there. There are lots of mysteries, and you know what? We try and solve those mysteries. We don't say, you know what? Yeah. can't understand it. It's God. Yeah. You know, that's just a lazy man's way out. Right. Could I ask you, Lawrence Krauss, and I know your time is valuable. I don't want to take advantage of your kindness. The book is A Universe from Nothing by Dr. Lawrence Krauss. Lawrence, just real quickly, let me give you a a list of observations I've made about the Big Bang. You say all the evidence overwhelmingly supports it. Well, there are missing collisions. This is brand new science in the spiral galaxy clusters millions of years of missing collisions. The astronomers, astrophysicists are saying it's embarrassing. Their words, they're too perfect. There's missing heavy metal from a trillion stars in 15 galaxies. They say there's millions of years of missing heavy metal. There's missing stage three supernovas. Spiral arms are not deformed like they would deform in a couple million years. There's a missing echo of the Big Bang. 
There's the missing uniform distribution no, that, well, of isotopes. Everything you said is wrong. I studied numerical simulations. We are, are able to reproduce beautifully, in fact, better and better and better, the nature of spiral galaxies. And, in fact, because of the, the spiral arms are, are, are stabilized by the existence of dark matter, which is one of the other bits of evidence for dark, dark matter. Right. The fact that, the fact that we, we, we uh, are, in fact, are more and more discovering um, uh, early generation stars with some heavy metals, which are quite interesting, and it's one of the areas that I'm actually interested in, because the, that's the early evolution of stars. One of the reasons we're building the James Webb t- Space Telescope is to look at the first generation of stars so we can answer those questions. But there's no, there's nothing, none of what you said in any way not only obviates the Big Bang. Well, they, these are all the missing, it. these are all things that are, you need secondary assumptions, you need rescue devices you create we unknowns. We see the Big Bang. We uh, look out and we see you, the Big Bang. We you, say there's a missing cre- echo. Go out and look with the microwave background you, and see the cosmic Lawrence. microwave background, which, tell, which, is, which is measured and is predicted as part of the Big Bang. and is measured to exquisite accuracy. One part in a million, it has the characteristics. It's the best what, the CMB? body background in nature. What, the CMB you're saying? The cosmic microwave That's background, not yes. true. Okay, you oh, okay. say in well, your you book. Know, you can, you can well, go out and measure it and tell well, me it isn't true. But, well, but, I, but you know, you I've been say involved in the studies of CMB yeah. for a long time, and I know what's true. Well, you say in your book, you talk about the distribution of chemical elements in the universe, and you say that, I mean, you use really colorful language. This is the big proof of the Big Bang. The fact that lithium is predicted to be one part in 10 to the 10th. Yeah, and, and I have... 24%. And I have and, so and, and many... amazingly, co- that's what they work out and, to be. And I have so many quotes, not only from Nature and Physics Essays, and from hundreds of scientists at respected institutions that say this, that say those predictions are historically false. They were adjusted after the data was observed, and repeated, and this is now being documented. Well, nature, you know I, nature, I, I, 19... Well, I, I, take, I take personal offense to that because I've predicted the abundance of light elements in the, in the Big Bang. And I didn't, you know, and I just did it based on the best physics we could come up with, computer codes and uncertainties in nuclear reaction rates as measured in nuclear reactors. This, this and, is... and to say that I, that I fixed the data is, 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 is obviously an offense to me personally. All right, what do you say about this in the journal Nature, 1990... A particular value for the baryon of photon ratio needs to be assumed ad hoc to obtain the predicted abundances. That is repeated and affirmed by hundreds well, we of advanced degree the photon ratio. All of the data only agrees for a specific value of the baryon of photon ratio. That's how you actually determine things. You know, you measure things yeah. and you see and you compare with theory and you see what agrees. That's how we do science. So we've actually measured the baryon of photon ratio. And the amazing thing is. We do a completely independent measurement. So we measure it from nuclear reaction data, and we determine that the baryon to photon ratio is a certain number. And then we go out and measure the cosmic microwave background, which is a totally independent way. It doesn't depend on nuclear abundances or anything. And you know what? It gives exactly the same value. Now that is science. Now, I can't speak to what you just said. Well, it of does... course you can't, but right. I can. Yeah, and you can. It does contradict a signed statement by hundreds of scientists. Yeah, but I told you, don't give me signed statements. That doesn't matter. Well, well they're cases. scientists just I like you are, Lawrence. To sign a statement saying the Earth is flat, are you going to run your show tomorrow? No. Then you know what? We don't really no. know the Earth is flat. No, round. the flat the Earth guy is a Darwinist. The decided to sign a statement. All right. I mean, come on. The don't CMB. argue on the basis let, of that. Let me, that ask you about the, science. let me ask you about the cosmic microwave background prediction. Wasn't it off by a factor of 10 universes it didn't predict three degrees or two point seven, but thirty degrees, and no. so history shows that no. these predictions were adjusted after no. the fact. No, that's no. Uh, that's according no. to no, William that's right. Mitchell. That's right. It's great you're saying it, but that's not that yeah. we actually measure the number. We measure the number, and it tells us what the number is. But and, it's and, a it's adjusted then, after then, the and fact. Then we run our theories. And, of course, we didn't know the expansion rate of the universe, and as we measure the expansion rate of the universe, we get better and better ways of testing it. And the point is, don't you understand that some scientists would love to find that all the data is false because they become famous? And the point sure. is, scientists don't, I understand. Want to, don't do this stuff. I understand that. And I, I, we shake hands and wear hoods and say, look, let's not Dr. let Krause. any evidence is false. Because the only way to become famous in science is to prove your colleagues wrong. If we could prove the Big Bang was wrong, I'd win a Nobel Prize for it. Dr. Krauss, the other way to become famous, the best-selling atheist authors to me... Seem well, they're all atheists, so it doesn't really matter. I don't know what you're talking about. They're all atheists. Essentially, the first like, approximation all scientists are, yeah. Most of them aren't atheists. 
they don't even talk about it. As my friend Steve Weinberg says, most scientists don't even think enough about God to know if they're atheists. It's just irrelevant to what we do in the laboratory. You know, U.S. medical doctors are, are not theoretical physicists, but they're trained in applied science, the biological life sciences. Yeah, well, okay, they're not you know, the again, most ignorant. Data on who's what, they're, they're not the most relevant. ignorant group in the world, and 60% say God was involved in the origin of life, sixty yeah, percent. Doctors aren't, aren't, aren't evolutionary biologists. I know that. Basis. I just said they're, that, they're, but they're it's only, applied science. Mechanics believe that, that 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 you know God was involved in the evolution of life. It's a nice statement, but I don't care whether sixty percent or six percent. I compare what the data tells me. I don't do things by votes or authority. That's what religion does, maybe, but science does things by looking out at the universe. And I don't give me arguments about n percent of people think this or that. You know what? Forty. I mean, the, the fact that the fact that they're more. I mean, it's it's just yeah. amazing to me. If you could take you could take polls of people. Do you know fifty percent of American adults think the sun orbits the Earth? No, I don't. Well, I know, don't the believe National that. National Science Foundation does that study every year. Are you going to argue I, to me? That I don't, the Lawrence. Is, hold on. I don't believe that. Classes it. we should teach that the sun orbits no, the Earth. Cause of course not. Of people think that. I, I bet no, you. I bet you not one. Of education I bet you not one hundredth. I bet you not one hundredth of one percent of U.S. medical doctors believe that. And I don't well, even I, believe you know, the study uh, anyway. You can bet me all you want. I'm giving you a statistic which shows you if you want to take polls of people, you're going to find out the most ridiculous nonsense is believed by many people. And don't use that to validate your arguments. It just demeans well, your uh, arguments. Well, I, I agree with you that the truth isn't up for popular vote. I agree with that. Okay. The point and, is... And the, way we, and the way we try and find the truth is yeah. to rule out... And in fact, science doesn't really, believe it or not, deal with truth. It deals with falsehoods. We make predictions, the, and if they don't agree with the observations, we know they're false. If they agree, it doesn't tell us it's the absolute truth. It you know, tells us we're on the right track, and we keep exploring more and more and more and refining our ideas. That's why science changes. That's why science makes progress. That's why you can live in a universe now where you can talk to me on the phone or Skype me, whereas yeah. 100 years you couldn't, That's because all, science makes progress. Not a single invention. We listed 100 inventions on this show, Real Science Friday. Okay. Not a single one required Darwinism. One of the members of the National Academy of Sciences, well, you know, Philip, you talk about the, you Philip know, Skell, the, the analyzed is the... selection is the basis of many vaccines. He, and, you know, you Lawrence, can tell me, I mean, Lawrence, Philip I mean, Skell the analyzed the... modern biology. You Phil, can't do biology Philip, without, without, uh, without understanding the evolutionary basis That's of what Doug Zansky said. You can said, tell me that, but again, that, it's that, just that, as ignorant as the rest of your statement. Lawrence, that's what Doug Zansky... I really have a meeting where I've got to go Can I make a last point? Well, I've got a meeting with a postdoc and a graduate student where we're trying to actually go and do science. So All right. I, I kind of, I mean, All right. you know, I, I, national... like to, I, I'm trying to, to ba- argue yeah. with you on the basis You're of very scientific gracious. evidence, and you keep yeah. giving me this anecdotal stuff, and it's just... It's just not worth having a discussion because, first of all, yeah. nothing I'm going to say, no data I'm ever going to talk to you about. That's is not true. Going to convince you of something that that's you've already not, decided is true. That's, that's not, not true. That's not the way science works. That's not true, Lawrence. The New Testament says you can falsify Christianity. Could well, be falsified. Great. We have in many cases. That's <laughs> not well, true. We falsified most but, of the things but, in the Bible. But I am open. Are you open to the possibility that Darwinism is false? What do you mean Darwinism? You might, you might Evolution. Like communism. Am I open to the possibility that the, all of evolutionary biology is based on a false premise? Well, there's that possibility, but it's right. incredibly remote, right. given the fact that it's the basis well, of modern... Well, Dr. Like Philip... I'm willing to argue that maybe Newton and, and Einstein and everything I know about physics is somehow wrong, but boy, it'd have to be an amazing conspiracy. All right, well, because- Dr. Philip Scale of the NAS said he analyzed 100 years' worth of Nobel Prizes in biology, and he personally interviewed dozens of world-renowned scientists, and he said he could not find one Nobel Prize in biology in a century that depended on the theory of evolution well, nice or Darwinism. Well, says that. But why do you actually take the National Academy of Sciences, the same organization, puts out a book, which you yeah. should get, which actually talks about evolution and explains the basis of yes, modern we science. Yes, we went through there. The National Academy, that group of the most esteemed scientists in the country, has, in fact, put out a book for the public. I know. Explaining the misconceptions that people like you have and why they're wrong. There's a worldview bias. So people look at origins and they say, we know that you don't need a god. And that's an overselling of well, what we know. I don't know that you don't need a god. The question is, do you or don't you? I don't know anything till I investigate it. That's why I'm well, a Well, do you know? Do you, you know, know everything before you investigate it. That's why you're a creationist. Do you know that you don't need a god for origins? Do you know that? No, absolutely that's not. Very good. Thank you. 
Yeah. But, I mean, absolutely not. And that's why I'm open-minded. But I demonstrate that based on what we see, there's no evidence for it. And that's an interesting result. And I do it with an open mind. Well, well how about the discovery? Conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lawrence. Okay, God bless. I appreciate you. Stop. 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 St